We need to talk about Morgan Gibbs White. Is he a problem or is he a solution? And is he causing Steve Cooper headaches? Welcome to your latest Forest video. Good morning, evening or night. Hope you guys are doing well and welcome to this special video, if you like, on Morgan Gibbs White. In this video, we discussed it yesterday on Grumpy Old Reds, but is Morgan Gibbs White starting to become a bit of an issue? And I use the word issue very loosely. And before all the uh, all the lurkers in the background come at me, everyone knows and I've been accused plenty of times of having Morgan Gibbs White goggles. But I want to be objective on this. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you some stats on Morgan Gibbs White. We're going to talk about the position he plays. We're going to compare him to other similar players like maybe Eze from Crystal Palace. And we're going to break down how he fits in and what should the expectation be on MGW from the Forest fan base. If you're enjoying the video, please don't forget to hit that like button subscribe to forest fan tv if you are new and don't forget you've only got until tomorrow at 7 30 to get the last few tickets of this beautiful 1979 european forest home kit from football prizes the links in the description and pinned in the comments all right guys let's get into this Okay, so let me start by saying, why are we doing this video? Are we trying to dig out Morgan Gibbs White? Of course not. But there definitely is a bit of frustration in at least certain parts of the fan base on his playing and the way he's been playing. I feel for me personally, I love him. I think he's going to be one of the best talents to come out of Forest for many, many years. And I think there are still signs of improvements that need to be made within his game. And I think he would be the first to admit it as well. The key frustration for me is his shooting. I think his shooting isn't getting any better this season. And it's something that he's mentioned himself pre-season about what he wants to improve on. So we'll have a look at some of his shooting stats in just a second. I think the biggest criticism that gets thrown at him from most of the fan base is the flicks and tricks. He's always trying a nice little neat flick and trick. And it seems to come off one in about 10. I don't have that as a stat. I'm just saying it. Um, I've got to say though, I think he's dialed that down a bit over the last few games and maybe has taken on board some of that um, criticism and is looking to improve it. But really, as we stand here five games in, and I know it's early in the Premier League season, as your cam, as your as your main piece on the on the chessboard, He's produced zero goals and zero assists. And I think even by his standards, he would say that he should have returned more than that. So let's get into this and let's start having a look at some of the stats. And is Morgan Gibbs White becoming a problem? Is he a problem? We'll get into all of that now. Okay, so let's start by having a look at my boy MGW stats in comparison to the other players in the other top five leagues. Um, around Europe. And there's a few key stats for me that stand out. It's his assists and his XG or um, X average assist that he gets. That's the big ones for me where he really does excel. He's in the top 70 to 78 percentile for those stats. He averages one assist every four games, you would say, roughly based on those numbers. And defensively, he's very good. He's in the top 62 percentile for interceptions and also in the air. And this one surprised me. He's in the 96 percentile as well for aerial duels one. And that for me is a good sign of how he tracks back. And I would say that actually actually reflects what you see on the pitch. He's very good at tracking back his work rate. I don't think anyone can question that on the pitch. Now, where his stats fall down, or should we say needs a bit of work on, is his passing stats. His passing completion percentage is 61.4%. 
and that's in the bottom three percentile for similar players to him. His progressive passes received as well is 4.38 and it's in the bottom three percent and his progressive carries and I think this is an important one is 2.09 per 90 and he's in the bottom 14 percent. So he tends to try and take the ball on a lot and then instead of releasing it for a complete pass either he misplaces the pass or he gets tackled by the opponent. So if you're looking at places where he definitely needs to improve on it's his passing for me. That passing completion percentage is quite a damning number. The progressive carries as well need work on. And I think defensively he's very good. But is that a reflection on the style of football that Forrest have been playing, say, for the first, past 12 months under him? But overall, you look at these stats and you think it's not the complete player yet, but it's a player who's working towards something decent. But does that kind of open your eyes to a few of the issues? I think it reflects quite well on what a lot of the fan base are saying they see with him on the pitch. His work rate is fantastic. He's good at getting the assists, especially at the back end of last season. Him into Taiwo became a habit. It's the passing and the ball carrying where he's doing a bit too much. It's a criticism that was thrown at Dennis quite a lot last year, but not so as much at Morgan Gibbs White. But what do you guys think about that stat? Let me know. So let's have a look at Morgan Gibbs White's Premier League stats. And he's had 88 appearances with six goals. Obviously, some of those appearances will be for the likes of Wolves, etc. But his goals per game is at 0.07. And this is something he definitely has to work on. Now, on paper, 0.07 sounds horrifically bad, but it's not really in the grand uh, scheme of things. Because if you look at like a Madison, who I think... Uh, Morgan Gibbs White should aspire to, you know, um, follow in his path. He's at 0.2 and Eze, he's at like 0.18. So it's not horrifically off those players. All his goals have come from his right foot. He's quite right footed in the way he plays. And if we look at his shots, he's had 93 in total with 30 on target, giving him a 32% shot accuracy. Now, again, that's not that bad in comparison to the other players. And Madison is at like 36%, something like that. So he's in and around the right figure for his shot accuracy. I think for me with Morgan Gibbs White shooting, too many times it's done from quite far out and too many times it either goes high or wide. And the ones that are accurate are quite weak, if I'm being um, objective about it, and end up just dribbling up to the keeper or the keeper makes a comfortable save with it. Where his stats look good from last um, year is the assist tally. He's in double figures for the assists. He's got um, quite a few of those in last season's uh, campaign, obviously. But he's missed eight big chances. But he has also created 12 big chances as well. So pretty much all the big chances he's created have been converted into goals by Nottingham Forest or on the odd occasion with Wolves. Now, his crossing ac accuracy isn't amazing. It's at 22%. He's only crossed it 230 times in those 88 games. So he's not massive for crossing. Um, and he's done 23 through balls. And I think this is another stat that I would like to see pushed up because I think he's really good at those through balls, especially against defenses that play a higher line. I'll take it back to the Palace game at the end of last season. His through ball was fantastic into Taiwo and we got a goal off the back of it. So overall, the stats aren't too bad. He just needs to start bolstering up that goal tally and a bit more on the assist tally as well. It's just those passing stats for me are the ones that stand out currently. Okay, so let's have a look at a direct comparison between MGW and Eze from Crystal Palace. And you can see Eze's stat just as you look at it to the naked eye are very much greener than Morgan Gibbs White, especially in the goal scoring area. His non-penalty goals in the 81 percentile, whereas Morgan Gibbs White is really low in the 13 percentile. Um, same with total shots. He's in the 86 percentile compared to Morgan Gibbs White in the 34 percentile. But Morgan Gibbs White on assists is a lot better. Now, the passing stats are the ones that stand out. Eze's passes completed are at 78%. As we said, Morgan's was 61%. Eze up in the 76th percentile compared to Morgan's 3 percentile. And in terms of defensive work, they're quite similar. I'd say overall it's balanced, isn't it? Um, Eze's better in the tackle. 
MGW better in the interceptions and better in the aerials. So I think this is quite nice to see. This is kind of the standard that Morgan Gibbs White needs to build up towards. And it's clear for me, the area he needs working on is two things. His passing, his passing attempts and his passing completion, as well as his overall shooting. And for me, he's talked about the shooting side of things, as I mentioned, preseason. So he does need to start putting that onto the pitch as well. Getting more accurate shots, taking smarter shots, I think, knowing when to shoot at the right time and when to lay off a pass. And that will come as he continues to develop within the team. But what do you guys think about these numbers? Does it kind of change your perspective of MGW at all? Okay, so let me give you my actual objective thoughts on Morgan Gibbs White. I think he is our most talented player in the squad and has, now that Jono's gone, the highest ceiling to grow and develop. But my biggest concern with Morgan is the lack of competition in his position. Honestly and realistically, the only person who can now challenge him with Scarpa going to Olympiakos is Aguilera, and he's not ready for the Premier League. And that might start to give MGW a sense of, you know, ownership of that position that it's unchallenged. And I don't think that's a good thing. I think there needs to be competition in all places. It removes complacency, in my opinion. I also think Steve Cooper can and should be a bit harsher with Morgan Gibbs White. When he's playing poor or he's not having, you know, an above par, a below par or above par, depending on which way you want to look at the golfing terminology, performance, Steve Cooper should be big enough to be able to sub him off. Maybe change the formation up because there isn't a replacement. Maybe go for a wider option instead. And I don't think Steve Cooper is doing that. And at the same time, I don't think Cooper would ever drop Morgan Gibbs White out of the team because I think the team is designed and created to be built around Morgan Gibbs White, which I have no problem with. The problem I have with that is that I think Morgan Gibbs White himself already knows that. He's come back from the England campaign where they won in the summer and there is a bit more of an air of arrogance around him. And I don't think that's a bad thing as long as it's, you know, um, kind of utilized into the right mentality and the right way of thinking on that. But I do think it's just gone a little too far. Am I saying drop Morgan Gibbs, Gibbs White? No. But am I saying he does need to be challenged? He does need to have pressure on him? Absolutely. But sometimes, sometimes, maybe, maybe just to bring him back in line, he could and should be dropped for a game or subbed off within a game. I look ahead to the Man City game and it's something I said yesterday where there's talks of will we go to a back uh, five again and uh, play a defensive style of football? The answer is probably yes. But I suggested going a 4-3-3, playing three really solid midfielders in there, go with the two wingers, Callum hudson Adoy and Alanga, and put Awani up front. And that would mean dropping Morgan Gibbs-White. But I don't think that's something Steve Cooper will do because, as I just mentioned, this team is designed around Morgan Gibbs-White. I hope all of this makes sense. I hope you don't take it in the right way as well. I'm not saying Morgan Gibbs White is crap, sell him, get rid of him. He doesn't work. I'm just trying to put those stats out there for you guys to get a better overlook on, on what we've got in terms of a player. And let's remember, he's only 22. He's got plenty, plenty of development and improvement that he's going to naturally make. So I think it's quite exciting to see how what he's going to be like in two or three years time. And he is the player that most opposition fans fear when we play against them. So he does have that fear factor about him, which in itself psychologically adds to what Forrest have got. So does he need to be dropped? No. On his current form, I think his last game was his best one for us so far. There are still some huge improvements he needs to make with his dead balls, corners, etc. I still don't think they're quite on song at all. And again, he's unchallenged in that position. Realistically, the only other dead ball taker we have with Scarpa not being in the squad is someone like Nico Williams, and he's not starting currently. So I'm really interested to hear your guys' thoughts on Morgan Gibbs-White. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Would you consider dropping him? Do you think he should be, you know, not above being subbed off in a game if he hasn't having a great performance? And if he is, who is his 
um, direct replacement. If you don't think it's Aguilera in the squad, who can replace him, in your opinion, in that number 10 role? And please do take this video in the right way. It's not a criticism. It's more an analysis on Morgan Gibbs-White. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. Go grab those last few tickets from right here from Football Prizes for the 79 European Home Kit winning shirts signed by our great heroes. And we'll see you on the next video. You Reds.